Hello, it's Shug here, and today we are going to talk about our control line airplane handle. Now, the handle is the lifeline to your plane. Mine's hooked up to my P-51 right now. Normally, I would be holding it about like this, and by raising or lowering my arm, I can get down or up, or I tend to sort of use my wrist more. But if you're new, you might want to just stick with this a bit. All right, I raise my arm, and I get some up. Lower my arm and I get down. Elevator up, flaps down, down, flaps up, elevator down. Arm up, arm down. Or we use wrist. What I have on this because I've got a OS 46. The lines I'm using for this plane, I'm at about 60 feet. I'm using the .15 by 19 strand stainless steel cables. Now this is a hard point handle that I've been using. It's a Rayco. By hard point meaning there's no cables. And I have my spacing probably at about three and a half inches. And that is set up right there for my electric P40. And if you'll notice right there, his spacing is very tight. Meaning he doesn't need a lot of control for that plane. And if he were to move it out, these line clips right here, you get a lot more line control. And yes, we're required to use a safety thong in case you uh, lose your handle while you're flying. It'll just crash your plane, but no one will get hurt. You know, a lot of this stuff on your handle spacing and how you're going to use your handle is how well you set your plane up when you first build it or assemble it if it's an ARF. But if you can have your plane trimmed out really well on the ground before it ever takes off, you're going to have a lot less struggle flying it. Now, if you're a first time flyer, control line is gonna break your heart. You'll probably dog it in. Now, you probably won't ruin it, but be prepared for crashes and accidents, and uh, that's just part of the hobby. So go ahead and buy yourself a lot of cyanoacrylate glue and epoxy and get good at mending. Now, you have your line spacing right here, so you have s several options with all your holes in order to get that closer or wide. And also with this kind of handle, this metal part will move out or back so you can make adjustments sometimes if your elevator and flaps are not quite lined up. So you can see there's a bolt right there where you can move this metal part out and the same right here. So they will adjust out and back and you get a lot of adjustments out of that handle. You know how I was talking earlier about if you're going to fly control line that you're going to crash? Look at this. I was out flying the Panther and I have one. It's kind of that that thrill of knowing it could happen is what makes this hobby exciting for me. And when it does happen, it's not a great feeling. You're always a little disappointed in yourself. Now here's John's handle. He also likes the bias. This is the part, it's a hard point where the lines attach and you can see the handle kind of leans back. It's a very personal thing what you put in your hand to fly that plane. Now here's another one of Tom's little handles. Now you can't very well adjust your spacing here, but you can adjust your line length back and forth. The, the spacing, the cable lengths, a hard point, the shape of your handle, it's kind of what this hobby is. It seems simple, oh, but it ain't. The old Prowler always, always rock steady. So now for the Prowler, I it used to be my plane of choice and I keep bringing it out of retirement. But I have a, this is a Brodac control line handle. 
It has adjustments so you can space this bar out or in or lean it. You have your line spacing done a little bit of a different way. I'm always at about three and a half inches. And this is your cable handle. So I know I'm, for this plane, I'm about 60 something feet. So I normally walk out about 22 steps. All right, that puts me at 22 steps and now I'll roll the lines out back to the plane. And I'm clip my clip. And this ought to put me pretty close to my plane. Darn near perfect. So I take this little little line clip right here, which is a scissor clip. And that's my preferred. And I will hook that up to the line on here that does not have a clip on it on the lead out. And clip that on. This lead out has the scissor clip. And this one coming from my handle does not. So then I just clip that in there. And I always leave one on the plane, one on the handle. That way I know what's up, what is up. That up is up, and down is down. All right, now that I got these hooked up, I'm gonna do what's called walking my line. Normally I do this two-handed, but I'm kind of just spreading it out between my fingers, and I'm gonna get the kinks out of it. And just walk it slowly. There'll always be a couple of twists in the line. And you get out to your handle. And yep, see there's just a couple of twists. And I'll just let the handle unwrap itself here. Now my twists are out. I put my handle down. I double check to make sure up is up and down is down. Now you can see I have my safety thong on here, which is a requirement for flying at our fields with the insurance and everything. And you want to kind of be standing with your elbows slightly bent and try to get the handle as center in your body as you can. Alright, so I'm grabbing the handle here. Get my safety thong on. Checking my up and down. I'm checking to make sure everything is is good here on my connectors. I give Tom the go sign. All right, we got to take off on the prowler now. And I'm a left-handed flyer, though we still go the same direction. And when you're new, now the wind is heading toward these trees and it is coming from the airport. So when you're new, you want to start kind of flying it up about this high. Don't get too high. Here we're at about 45. We're bringing it down. Right here, I'm kind of looking just to the tops of those trees I'm passing, all right? Now I'm downwind, I'm coming upwind. And now that I'm upwind, I'm just gonna start bringing the plane up, then bringing it down so it's into the wind. And this is the way you start kind of learning to get a little control, just a little bit at a time. Now I'll go for some loops. And I'm making them really big. And I'm giving some up, up put while I'm there. Now I'm gonna unwrap my lines by doing some outside loops. We won't even get to that yet. All right, so when you get to your loop, you wanna bring it up high and you don't wanna turn it really tight like that. See how my plane sort of stalled out? You wanna open it up and I'm giving it up, I'm holding it, and as I come through, a little more up so I can fly out level. Do that again. I'm making it pretty high, and I'm coming out so I got plenty of room. You could even get up here. That's a pretty tight loop. We're gonna un unloop it a little. Now once you get your loop down, another maneuver you're going to learn to do is a figure eight. So I'm doing a loop, I'm inverted, now I'm giving down. Now I'm giving up. Now I'm inverted and I'm giving down. 
and you can make these long and now I'm giving it down and this is a really good way eventually you're just gonna start going inverted now when you're inverted keep it a little high just notice my handle is sideways I have that habit it reminds me that I'm flying upside down and now down is gonna bring me up so I'm gonna give it down input all right now we're back to level flight so you're gonna come around with the wind at your back give it a little up do a partial wing over as you go into the wind come down well the reverse wing over come around I'm gonna do a straight over wing over cut inverted I give it down try to come back over in the same path give it up so let's get back to the loop you're gonna play it high Sort of to your treetops. Give it up, let it come around, and remember to give it up as you come to the bottom. So I'm giving it up, and give it some up. Try to fly out straight. Give it some up, give it some up. Bring it through, give it some up. Remember, again, don't try to, don't give it too much up and stall the plane. See how it kind of bounces around there. Here's everybody's planes today and their field box. Your field box is real important because that you've got all your tools and your propellers and your lines and your handles and your starters and your Windex and your sunscreen, your tachometers and your fuel and your, your little tools and your starting panel. Here's mine where I carry part of it out. I got my panel right there. I got a little box I can take off my other box with my fuel pump and my my glow plug battery. I used the big Super Shot 2. My starter. My finger flipper, which goes on my finger for, for that SV-11. He doesn't recommend a starter, so you got to have some protection because those things will bump you and they will cut you. Now this is my field kit and this part will come off so I can carry it separately hook back on and I got uh, my timer for time and lapse I have my tachometer got my fuel pump here's my fuel right here various things I got notes the panther that I crashed today there's some notes on it little drawers full of batteries and weights and glow plugs and tank stoppers and little tools and needle valves and pliers and bolts and cutters and some very important thing is your Loctite thread locker. So all your little bits and bobs that you need for the day.